Welcome to your weekly inspiration. This is Kathy. <laughs> and this is Joey. You sound a little louder this week. He's really inspired today. Can you tell? I am extremely expi- expired. Expired. <laughs> I'm inspired. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I'm um, looking for the ins- expiration exactly. date. <laughs> you know, I, I was having a cup of coffee and it got cold, so I needed to heat it up, so I stuck it in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I could heat it up really fast. That's right. And, but you know, for some reason, in my opinion, microwave coffee just it, it takes away the true flavor. It does. It does. Truly good coffee. Well, we could do a whole weekly <laughs> on that alone about how microwaves actually change the molecular molecular structure ah. of food and mm-hmm. yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah. That's what I hear. So speaking of microwaves. Speaking of microwaves, it happens to be you are so brilliant. It oh, happens yeah. to be the topic of today's <laughs> weekly inspiration. Um, which is basically um, in my view, it seems as though we are a microwave society living in a crock pot world. Yeah, and what I mean by that is that um, in society today, we want everything fast. Give it to me now, give it to me immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, But the world doesn't work like that. You know, it's so, um, with all this technology that's come along, and I know that I've shared this with you before, but it's a good time to share it again. Did you know that Texas Instruments, the calculator, um, I don't know if you remember it. Yes, I do. But in, you know, back when I was younger, (laughs) um, when the Texas Instruments calculator first came out, remember the red digital on there and and all the numbers, it was like click, click, click. Mm -hmm. Well, when the calculator first came out, people wouldn't use it Mm -hmm. because it returned the answers too quickly. And it made them feel stupid. Mm -hmm. So Texas Instruments programmed in a delay so that we subconsciously thought the calculator actually had to think about it. Really? And then people started I using did not it. know that. Now talk about a change sure in the more. way we sure view more. things. Now it's like you can't get the answer quick yes. enough. Yes, yes. I mean our computers run too slow. It's like everything. The phones run too slow. I know. And, yeah. I, I know. I was on my phone yesterday and I was Googling something and didn't come up immediately. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> There's something wrong with my phone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just the amount of information that Google has to go through is amazing. That's right. But um, one of the reasons that made me start thinking about this is that, um, you know, as we've talked about, we're starting to do more speaking engagements yes. and um, getting out there and doing what we absolutely love to do. And I had somebody talk to me the other day and said, you know, oh, wow, so you're just jumping into the speaking thing, huh? And I thought, well, and I looked at it and I said, well, if you can three years of preparation just jumping into it okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know and they're like what um three years ago I was still working for the title company and um it was during the summer and I thought you know I'm just I'm really not enjoying myself Mm -hmm. and I really believe in the old adage if you're not having fun don't do it do something else and I wasn't having fun in my job anymore I I kept saying it's like a monkey could do my job and I just Mm -hmm. wasn't pushing myself so I sat back and I said, okay, what do I really love doing? I love writing, I love speaking, I love coaching, helping people develop their marketing strategy. So I thought, well, I can do that in my business. So three years ago is when I started going back to giving classes. Because I've given classes throughout almost my entire career. Sure. Um, wrote a lot of technical guides back in the old JDA day mm-hmm. and even prior to that. Um, So I slowly started moving that way and doing coaching. And then when I um, got into real estate full time, there's not quite as much opportunity to give classes unless you're giving it on how to buy a home. But even that, it's hard to get those home buyer seminars picked up. Sure. So I went back and started doing technical classes again. And I've been writing my weeklies weeklies now for over two years Mm -hmm. and slowly evolving. But the point of it is, is that it's been a three-year process, mm. you know, and a lot of this stuff, um, on a daily basis, I mean, hardly a day goes by during the week that I'm not reading some kind of self-help type literature, um, or, you know, um, quantum physics type stuff, yes, I'm a <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it has enabled me to get to a point now that I have so much information so content-rich that I can get out there and kind of do what I want to do. Yes, yes. Uh, and we talked about it off-camera here that, uh, you know, they have these classes and seminars. 
take this class, you'll become a millionaire. Do right. this, you'll become a millionaire. If you follow this, you'll become a millionaire. And you know, don't get us wrong. These things have helpful information in there. Um, now, I personally did a fix and flip type class, and I did make a lot of money um, like this. Yeah. And I was wondering, hey, why wasn't I doing this before? Okay. But I lost a lot of money like this because I didn't appreciate it as much because I earned it way too fast. So I microwaved it, it cooked, I was happy, I ate it, and I felt sick after yeah. uh, so that. Yeah, so that, that's basically what happens in this microwave type society. And, you know, and we were also talking about like the, a lot of the wealthy people these days, the successful people, have always talked about, they always talk about work, you know, learning and work the old fashioned way, right? I, I'm only laughing because, you know, I'm writing a book. Mm. Um, and we've talked about it before, the three and the laws. Yes. And what's the second law? To learn. Yes. And the third law is to work. Uh, that's <laughs> so right. So you just that's mentioned right. both of them. And, and that, that's the true way of being successful. I mean, we may have talked about this in one of the other uh, weeklies uh, on people winning the lottery. I mean, they, they win it, and most of the times they go bankrupt afterwards. For a few years, right? Absolutely, yeah. Because they Absolutely. just don't know how to handle it. Absolutely. You know, so if, if we actually take the time to learn and then work it and find better ways to work it, then it's, it's going to be something that we're going to be proud of, something we're going to want to hang on to and not just... Blow. And appreciate it. I mean, it's, it's another analogy is just when um, college kids get the charge cards mm -hmm. and then they rack them up and then the parents pay for them, right? And then the college student doesn't appreciate what it took to get out of debt and relieve the debt. So what typically happens? It happens all over again. However, if you do it yourself, and you know, a lot of people do, they're not taught not to wrap up the charge cards, but if you're the one then that has to go and slowly and methodically pay it off and pay it down, chances are you won't wrap that up again. <laughs> if, right. Uh, but you appreciate it more when you put in the effort. Absolutely. And speaking of that, uh, you know, I'm a mortgage broker, and, and when they used to do cash out refis back then, we used to pay off their debt, right? Thinking, we're, okay, we're going to help these people by lowering up their total monthly payments on all their bills. Well, what do you think they do once well, you do that? It enabled them to rack up the charge card yes. again. <laughs> exactly. Plus, have a higher mortgage payment. Plus, have a higher mortgage payment, and then what else turned around was the market started going That's down. Right. So now they're completely underwater. Short sailing or foreclosing, you know, a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. But the bottom line is that if you if you get inspired and you're finding out what your true gifts are and you're, you know what path you want to get on, get on the path and know that the end of the path isn't tomorrow. You know, it's a constant learning. It's constant work and to work towards that goal and, yeah, and you'll appreciate it more when you get that. Absolutely. Well, Kathy. Well, Joe, here's to putting that crock pot on a simmer. And, <laughs> right. and it's better when it's simmered. Do you ever cook anything in the crock pot? Yeah. Ooh, I love getting over that smell and yeah. how tender the meat is. Absolutely. Ooh, I'm right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, until next week. Have an inspired week. Bye. Bye.